Okay, so what do we have here? This is going to be a video about, uh, or at least these next couple of videos are going to be about stress and strain and analysis and ana and analyzing, analyzing all those. So, stre axial stress, uh, shear stress, deformation, modulus of elasticity, and uh, oh, what was the other one? Oh, there was another. Um, We've got uh, we've got a bunch of letters. We've got we've got, we've got uh, delta. We've got big E. We've got little epsilon. We've got tau. We've got sigma. Lots of scary words. Lots of scary, creepy letters. But uh, turns out they're actually not that bad. Or at least I hope I can make you believe that they're not that bad. Okay. So first, I'm going to cover what, you, what each of them is. Um. Okay. So say you have a uh, like a table, maybe. So you have a table, and on that table, uh, you place this big block, right? Um, let's make it a really big block. This big block. So let's say we just look right here at this circle. So let's kind of zoom in on this circle. So we're, for now, we're only going to look at right here. Okay. So what's happening? The gravity is pulling this downwards, right? So it's pulling a downwards force right there. And then, in order for the table to hold it up, this leg has got to be pushing up a bit, right? It actually turns out it would be pushing maybe some fraction of the weight, but this has to be pushing up, right? So we've got two, fo um, two fo uh, forces going in opposite directions, and they're kind of, not quite sandwiching, but um, they're kind of swishing past each other, swishing is probably not the right word, but they're, they're moving past each other in opposite directions, and that makes uh, this whole table, um, it gives the whole table a tendency to just slice, like that. I mean, it wants to break off and go this way. That's what, uh, um, that's what, what is called, uh, not axial, um, that's called shear stress, because it shears off. That's why uh, shears are called shears. Um, that's how scissors work, but that's called shear stress. And uh, uh, the way that you represent shear stress is with uh, it's with the Greek letter tau. Whoops, sorry. This is a uh, I believe it's an uppercase tau. I, I haven't looked at my Greek for a while. So that's uh, that's tau, and tau is equal to the force divided by a cross-sectional area. And what the hell does that mean? Um, well maybe now, let's uh, kind of have been... Actually, no, we can go with this. So, kind of imagine this. Imagine it in a three-dimensional world. You figure... Ah, no. I'm gonna go with a different example now, because, uh, it'll just be easier. Uh, I want to delete. Okay, delete. Um, so now say you have, uh, say you have this golf club, right? So got a golf, or maybe it's just a, even just this metal rod. So it's just this metal rod, it could be like a golf club or whatever, and say you have uh, one force going here, and one force going here. And you're going to figure this is anchored into the wall somehow, so this this rod is not going to start turning. These are, these are anchored in. Uh, so what's going to happen? Um, well, the if you think about it, what factors would really affect uh, how much stress this thing would be under, how hard it would kind of have to, not really how hard it would have to work, but basically, uh, literally, how, uh, I don't know any other way to describe it, um, how much stress it's going to be under, um, it's going to depend on kind of like two things, right? It's going to depend on how hard it's being pushed on, right? So, that's the force. And it's going to depend on how thick it is, right? Because you can imagine um, putting stress on a golf club is going to be a lot easier than uh, putting stress on the uh, the metal I beams that maybe uh, hold up a building. Um, so how do we kind of come up with this equation? Well, if you just think about it, um, if I apply twice as much force, it's going to be under twice as much stress. That makes sense. If it's twice as big it's going to be under half as much stress. So, 
Um, just kind of think about it in that way. Uh, the force, bigger the force, bigger the uh, stress. The cross-sectional area, that's this, uh, whoops, that's like if you were to look at just this cross-section right here, or this cross-section right here, that's the area of that. So, uh, as that gets bigger, well then the for the, then the uh, not the force, the, the stress gets smaller. That's why uh, it's easier to, uh, well no, I'm not going to get into bending, but that's why it's easier to put a golf club under stress than it is to put a metal I-beam under stress. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to cover is very, very similar, um, except it's different and these, uh, the equations are the same. The concept is the same. It's just uh, a couple of things that are different. Basically, now if you've got this table, say you've got the table, say you've got one block sitting on top, maybe that's a big rectangular block, and then you've got another block sitting on top of that one. So you've got another block sitting on top of that one. What's going on here? Well, this green block is being pulled downwards by gravity, so it's pressing into the blue block. So the table is pressing up, equal and opposite, so that way the blue block doesn't go through the table. So these two forces are trying to squish the blue block together. Um, and that's what's called an axial force. Uh, and the reason that they call it that, I believe, is because um, it's a r it, you can like basically say that the forces are acting along some axis. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. But it's called an axial force. Uh, let me actually label what each of these are. Um, this was uh, this was shear stress, and then we're gonna we just got we just talked about axial stress, and that's if you're trying to squish something, or if you have say you've got this uh, you've got a wall, and then you've got a cable coming from a wall, and say you're pulling on that cable. Say you're, uh, you're pulling on that cable, well then, that cable has to be pulling back, or rather, the wall has to be pulling back on the cable, so that way you don't pull the cable out of the wall. So, now this cable is under, an un it's another form of axial stress, it's just like kind of like the negative of this. Um, so, it c it's either getting pulled, or pushed, or uh, compressed, pushed together. Uh, that is what axial stress is. So that also this one is represented by it's a lowercase sigma. You may recognize that from sigma six or six sigma from uh, sim, and that's equal to surprise surprise. It's actually the same thing, but why? Okay, well let's go through each example. In this case, what's uh, what's going to be the one of the big factors of how much stress this is under? Well, how hard you're pulling. That should make sense. The, the harder you pull, the more stress it's going to be under. And what's the other thing? Well, the thickness, right? Because, like we said, uh, this time we're going to say, what's going to be easier? Stretching a copper wire that's really, really thin, or stretching a golf club? It's going to be easy to stretch the copper wire because it's going to have less cross-sectional area. Um, hopefully that kind of makes sense. Uh, that's also why if you have a big block of dough, it's harder to stretch it, whereas um, if you have a thin block of dough, maybe for you bakers out there, uh, like a thin roll of dough, uh, it's easier to stretch that because uh, if you were to cut it in half and just look at uh, what you get when you when you cut that dough in half, if you look at um, kind of like what the inside of it, that cross section, um, that's the cross sectional area. So the bigger that is, the harder it is to pull something apart, right? So for an I beam, it's like practically impossible, especially with with the materials that are. So, uh, it turns out that that's the same equation. Whoops. Uh, and also over here, likewise, if you're pushing two things together, how hard you push is going to matter, how much force, and also how big it is is going to matter, right? Because, um, say you have something... I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example that wouldn't involve piercing your hand. Um, let's see... Let's just say you had, like, um, I don't know, um, a, a mechanical pencil, or no, let's say that you had a, uh, a pencil, 
uh, and have the razor at one end and the unsharpened end at the other. And you try to push together with your hands. If you do that, if you push hard enough, the pencil will break. Because uh, it just it can't withstand that much, that much stress. If you try to do that with a, uh, with, say, a, uh, a weightlifting bar, or um, maybe something bigger, like, say, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, like, if you try to do that with just, like, a hunk, a, a block of metal, and if you try to do that with an I-beam, the cross-sectional area is bigger, so you need a ton more force uh, to put it under the same amount of stress. So that's where we get these two from. These two are um, pretty essential, and yet they're so, so similar. But the symbols are completely different, and it confuses people.